second. second. We have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, we're going to, uh, what we're going to do is do for, uh, we're going to do the consent agenda and then we're going to then have Ms. Uh, DiMazio speak. So we'll do the consent agenda first. We, I know Council Member Benedict is here. Thank you on, for an item. Consent agenda 2002, mandatory referrals. Uh, 2020M064AB001, a request for the abandonment of a portion of Collins Park Drive right away and easements curving into 510 Collins Park Drive, requested by Nanu Patel, owner and applicant. Item B, 2020M002AB001, a request for the abandonment of the right of way in Eastman along Merritt Avenue from the railroad, approximately 240 feet eastward, requested by former engineering applicant, WeHo. QOZ1 LLC is the owner. Item C, 2020M03AB001, a request for the abandonment of right of way along a portion of Alley 146 from Lafayette Street northwestward to Elm Street between 4th Avenue South and 5th Avenue South. Easement of rights to be retained, requested by Barge Design Solutions. Item D, 2020M005AB001, a request to abandon a portion of right of way along alley number 312 from North 9th Street to alley 278 between North 9th Street and Neal Avenue, requested by Rick Wells. Item E, a request to abandon a portion of right of way along alley number 2005 from the dead end south of Fern Avenue to the dead end north of Fern Avenue, easement rights to be retained, requested by Sean O'Malley. Item F, modify the speed limit on Hamilton Church Road from Murfreesboro Road to Mount View Road from 45 miles per hour to 40 miles per hour, requested by Metro Public Works. Item G, modify the speed limit on Clayton Avenue from Belmont Boulevard to Vaux Lane from 30 miles per hour to 25 miles per hour. This has been requested by a resident. Item I, authorize a traffic signal at Lebanon Pike at Blue Hill Road, requested by R.G. Phillips. Mr. Knopf, is R.G. Phillips paying for this light? It is a development, yes, sir. Okay. Item J, authorized 20 mile per hour speed limit on Lookout Drive from 38th Avenue North to Sentinel Drive, requested by resident item K, authorized an all way stop at 4th Avenue North and Buchanan Street, requested by resident item L, authorized no trucks. Accept delivery signage at the following location requested by Council Member Hall, Gilmore Crossing Lanes, West Hamilton Avenue, Drake's Branch Road, Cato Road. Item N, M, authorize a traffic signal at the intersection of Gallatin Pike and Stratford Avenue requested by Council Member Van Reese and Council Member Benedict. I know Council Member Benedict is here. Okay. All right, the consent agenda has been read. Is Anyone asking that any item be removed from the consent agenda? Could we talk about item C? Yes. All right, we'll pull item C out. We'll make a motion for that. Any other items? Okay. There's a motion to remove item C. I've got a, I guess I'd like to remove G because uh, I'd like to hear from the, from the council people or. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we have a motion to remove item C. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, we have a motion to remove item G. Is there a second? Yeah. G. 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 Is there a second? Second. First and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as read? 
We have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I know Council Member Benedict would like to say a few words. You're welcome. Thank you for coming today. All right. Item C, Ms. Commissioner Kern. Yeah, I just had some questions about this um, and also just about the process for right-of-way abandonments for alleys that are part of a continuous network. Um, just because, and, and council member, maybe you have insight on this alley since it does, con it continues all the way to KVB. So I know those sorts of alleys are few and far between in the city, uh, especially downtown. Is Kate, sorry, Korean Veterans Boulevard. Okay. Yeah. Um, this alley continues all the way between the two streets. So um, is the alley going to be maintained on the site after it's developed, or is it totally um, going to be gone? Councilman O'Connell, I know you were part of this agreement with MCC and, and Mr. Right. Starks at the MCC. If you want to chime in anytime, go ahead. Sure. So this was, um, I mean, I, I totally appreciate your point. I think some of the, uh, some of this comes down to what you can do on a case by case basis. In this particular scenario, this is a an area where the Music City Center has sought to expand their footprint, and I think if I'm correct, Chip has acquired the majority of what we're looking at there, right? All so, of that. Yeah. So they have that entire. Um, area adjacent to Lafayette under their control at this point. And so part of what they are looking to do there is in addition to some MCC functions, possibly work with uh, we go public transit on a south of Broadway transit hub. And so this would actually be a pretty important node for being able to pull that off. I mean, I guess if I look at it from the standpoint of could you make use of that entire uh, piece of property, especially because Lafayette causes a bizarre uh, cut through Sobro there um, as it is. I know you do disrupt the continuous alley network, but I also think the advantage of being able to have a fully controlled parcel for something that could have important future municipal use is maybe justifiable. Yeah. So, let, and I will say, Mr. Starks is in Chicago today. He was going to be here, but he's doing He's at work, but not here. Um, the way he described it to me was just exactly like that. For now, it is an incorporation of all the parcels, and it's kind of going to be an equipment lot for, for the MCC, where they can store their vehicles and such. Long-term, and I mean that's kind of a short-term, long-term plan, is a transit hub with lots of green space, and there, there are, there's more planning to be done for phase two. Uh, I don't think anyone from Barge here I don't think this is necessarily has to be done in February type item, Ms. Kern, if you want to wait. Um, well, I guess one of my questions specifically was loading, and since that's come up so many places downtown. Um, so I, I don't know from experience whether or not this alley does provide the loading. Is there a loading option that's not blocking a street or a sidewalk for the future nearby? So, yeah, maybe if they had, because um, I just know that that's an issue around downtown. So. Losing an alley seems like something to take. Well, let me say, I don't. For. If it's on council's agenda to be heard, then then this recommendation does come into play. Right. Um, and if Terry were here, she'd give us the super majority yes. versus majority speech. But yeah. Uh, so if we defer it, it could come into play at council with a super majority vote needed. Otherwise, we could defer it, and Mr. Starks can come in and explain it a little better than what mm -hmm. we're doing here. Freddie, I would do, like if you feel comfortable like long term, we're not losing a, an asset for for loading, for you know trash pickup, um, those sorts of things. I think the way that the entire parcel will be used would actually make it such that all of those considerations would be incorporated elsewhere into a fully designed site. Right? Okay. I mean, yeah. I would think about it as, hey, at some point this is going to have some kind of use.
use that occupies that entire footprint rather than, hey, this is several individual parcels, right? And so to that end, I would think that, especially if it's going to be accommodating large transit vehicles, like right. we will have some access uh, for vehicles at scale. Right. Commissioner Woods, you had come. Can you tell me who owns this parcel again? Uh, Music City Center, or I guess technically the, um, yeah, the MCC Authority. Okay. So are we going to get any income from that as a city? Um, probably not until it is in a redevelopment phase, and so I don't think there's any kind of final design. I don't even think there's a preliminary design. When I was on the phone with him Friday, it was more of a, there's not going to be a whole lot of funding changing hands, but when we go wants to do that downtown hub, MCC is going to welcome that. So it, Metro will have a some potential land use there for the transit hub, for bikeways, for walking areas, um, but I don't, I don't know the funding possibilities. It, it's probably not going to be something that generates a lot of property tax or sales tax revenue, but it will be something that I think creates a lot of public use. And so, I mean, not a park, but it will be something that is a, a significantly used public facility if, if the design is able to be, you know, carried forward from a capital perspective. So what happens if the design's not carried forward? I mean, I think that's a reasonable question, and so then you'd, you'd say, and this is probably to Nora's point, if we don't have this locked in, um, you know, from a capital standpoint, if MCC were to put this back on uh, the market as an assembled parcel, then, you know, is this, is this a premature abandonment? I, you know, I, that might be something to actually ask Charles about. So maybe, maybe a meeting deferral is not a bad idea. Just curious, you know yeah. me, I'm always a small business person. Where's the money coming from? Who's going to pay for it? Understand. Understand. Well, in this case, I believe it's already fully acquired, right? Correct. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Except for the alley. Yeah. No, but I think you all are asking questions that relate to one another in that right. if if we do this now and we don't have um, a known capital item for this uh, and, say, five years from now a private entity comes in to acquire it, have we – unnecessarily disrupted our alley network. Okay. All right. I, I'm going to suggest it sounds like it might be helpful to have Mr. Starks come to our next meeting to That's discuss okay. this because I think we have several questions. Sure. So, yeah. I think that'd so be would you like to make a motion, Commissioner Kearns, on this item? Yeah, I'll make a motion for a one meeting deferral. Okay. We have a first. Is there a second? Second. second. We have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, All right. The item's been deferred till the March meeting. All right, item G, modify the speed limit on Clayton Avenue. Commissioner Woods. I'm all for uh, pedestrian safety, and we need to slow things down in that neighborhood. I'm just curious, did either council person sponsor this that's part of that area, or, or I mean, is this, is this 25 going to be the same as the other streets that it runs into, or? Is it just one it, block? It would be one of those case by cases until we get to the 25 mile per hour countywide ordinance. Okay. Uh, but I understand what you're saying. It is on a council district line, and there are multiple council people involved in this. I don't mind deferring this one so I can make sure both council people know what's going on. I can tell you one was notified. I don't know if the other was. So I can, I can double check that one month. Oh, is that what we should do, you think? World. I don't mind. Yeah, it's been 30 miles per hour. One more month won't hurt. Because actually, this brings yeah. up a, a question. I know Mr. Hammond is here about where the status of lowering the speed limits to <coughs> 25 miles per hour are, and this may be covered when Ms. Damasio discusses the mayor's plan. But Mr. Hammond, do you have any? insights as to where we are with lowering the speed limits to 25 miles per hour countywide. I do, Mr. Chairman. I'll be glad to give an update on that. Um, we have had two meetings of the committee that's working, as, as you remember. Um, we have a committee that will help us uh, do a lot of the educational components to that. 
and uh, we had two meetings with that committee. Uh, we'll have a third one here scheduled very shortly. Uh, we're working with purchasing now on the contracting to do the inventory part of that. That's the next big task that's in front of us is to do the, the um, signing inventory so that we know exactly where all of these signs are. That's going to take some time. Uh, we just finished the work through purchasing to get someone under contract to do that and, and began the process of, of finalizing that, that work order uh, last Thursday. We expect that to take us uh, through about uh, late spring before we're ready to have that inventory in hand ready to move forward towards the implementation of that. So we are, we are a couple of months away from, from being able to move uh, in earnest with that. The legislation, though, is about 80 percent complete uh, that has been drafted. There's a couple of, uh, a little bit of work left to do uh, yet with uh, finalizing some of the, the street exceptions that that legislation will apply to. So that's where we are in a nutshell. Let me know if you need a sponsor. <laughs> All right. So, again, may I ask a question, Mr. Hamlin? Sure. So, is the legislation you get ready, is it going to come here first and then go to council? Would it be read at council and then with the referral here? Do you it know will the come process? back here before it goes to council as okay. part of a mandatory okay. referral. All right. And that, you will see We see that from our side, typically, by the time it reaches council committees, most of what you all do, or what now we all do here, has already been approved at this commission, okay. and so okay. and this Correct. should follow suit. All right, thank you. Yes, sir. All right, Commissioner Woods, you would you like to make a motion on this item? I'm okay with it going through. I think that okay. just okay. I'll I'll still touch base with the council people before all we right. start installing signs. Great. All right. Well, why don't you make a motion, please? Make a, mo a move to approve uh, okay. modifying the speed limit on Clayton Avenue from Belmont to Box Avenue. 30. From 30 to 25. From 30 to 25, sorry. All right. All right. We have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. What we're going to discuss next is we have uh, Faye DiMaggio from the mayor's office is going to discuss the uh, – the Nashville transportation plan and uh, I had the privilege of uh, attending one of the mayor's uh, listening uh, tours uh, last week and it was so I do want to commend the mayor's office for going out and amazingly speaking to the citizens about how uh, uh, the, the city's traffic could be improved so that's a great start thank you well, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here today. And I want to apologize before I get started. When we were um, flying out the door to get over here, I grabbed up the survey card so that you could take a look at them, and I failed to grab up both the English and Spanish versions, and I think you have all Spanish versions. So, okay. Um, but I got English. So I got you have English. an English one? Yes. Excellent. All right. Um, so, so touch up on my Spanish. we have some of both. <laughs> very good. Um, the survey is available online, too, and I'll talk about that at the very end. But, um, again, thank you so much for your time time today. It's a pleasure to talk to you about what I think is one of the most critical and important issues facing Nashville right now, and that's how we continue to meet our mobility and transportation challenges, both currently and into the future. Um, I know you're all aware that uh, when the mayor was running for office, he made a commitment to a new transportation plan within a year. Um, seemed like a very ambitious schedule, um, but the good news is there had been so much work that's already been done in Metro Nashville over the last few years um, that we are really a leg up in terms of figuring out what needs to be in this plan. Um, as was mentioned um, by the uh, chairman of the committee, the, um, the first thing we started with doing, though, is listening. Um, most important communication skill we have, for sure. Um, and we started off back in November with having a series of listening sessions with all of the council members. Um, talk to each one about what were the um, issues in their district, what were the issues metro-wide, what, what were their concerns, and, and what were they hearing um, from the community. We followed that up now with a 11 community listening sessions. We're about halfway through those. Um, there will be an, another one this week. Um, the schedule for those is available on our website, www.nashville.gov, mayor's page, and then under transportation. Um, and if you haven't already attended one, we, we certainly hope to see you at those. We, we're going about those very differently as well. 
um, they are listening sessions and it's been remarkable um, and I know that you you got to see this in in action um, it's really remarkable a lot of times people come into the meetings and you can tell they come in and they're they've got something there they want to say and they know that we're going to tell them what we're going to do and instead we start the meeting off by saying we're not presenting a plan we this is your plan so we want to hear from you what you want to have in it and we start the meeting off that way with this is really about listening there are uh, several different activities that we do all these activities again are available online you can do them online or you can come to the meetings and do them um, in person but the first uh, activity that's really been very well received is everyone at the meeting gets twenty dollars obviously not twenty real dollars <laughs> but uh, we have two banks set up of, of uh, monopoly money and you get to go and, and pick that twenty dollars out in whatever denominations you think you will need and then you've got nine different project types again not specific projects but project types everything from transit safety state of good repair bikeways sidewalks traffic calming um, working with the state on state routes all kinds of, of things but nine of them and then you show us how would you spend your twenty dollars um, and the very first meeting, very interesting, I had a, a woman who came up to me, she came in, she was very specific, very, um, knew exactly what she wanted. She came up to me with her $20 bill and she said, I know exactly what I'm gonna do with this. And I said, excellent, that's great. So she goes over to the table and then a few minutes later she came back and she said, I think I need some change. <laughs> um, and so she went and made some change and then in a little bit she went and did the, the exercise but she came back and she said, I didn't have enough money and I said you live where we live every day um, those making those hard choices and having to figure out how to prioritize amongst a lot of things that are very deserving and much needed in the community um, so far out of the um, uh, six meetings that we've held um, transit in that particular exercise has been by far and away um, the the largest um, uh, investment category the, it's gotten the most votes if you will um, followed by things like state of good repair traffic management sidewalks safety um, the things you would really expect it's it's about taking care of what we have and also looking to that vision of the future that we need in order to continue to be a prosperous and and uh, Nashville that can accommodate our, our current and future growth we also have two other exercises that are blank. Uh, we've got long blank banners with um, two questions, open-ended questions. One question is, what does a transportation plan look like that serves everyone? And we've been getting lots and lots of different answers to that question, but very open-ended. And again, it's all for us about listening. The second one is if you, uh, if, what, what, what would the transit system need to, to be like or include? What would WeGo need to be in order for you to choose WeGo over however you currently, your preferred mode of travel now? Um, so we get a little bit more insight into the transit piece of it there. But understand that again, this is a transportation plan. So while transit is certainly a part of it, so are all of those other pieces. Um, and and you know one of the things that I always stress is traffic management may be the most important thing we do because traffic management and our traffic management system is how we control pedestrian movements it's how we um, control cyclist movements it's how we control vehicular movements and so forth so very critical part to be able to enhance the safety operations and efficiency of our of our system and then the last activity that we have is where we let people get down very much to the neighborhood level and um, there's post-it notes and if you have a particular issue in your neighborhood at that intersection that drives you crazy or the sidewalk that's missing or whatever you're able to go and put post-it notes um, again on the map and show us specifically with a note about it what those questions are um, we've stressed over and over to folks that what we really want to do is solve for the everyday issues that people face the things that you go home at night and you sit when you when you first get home from from work or you get home from school and you're sitting down and you're saying um, or maybe over the dinner table and you say you know it took me three cycles to get through that light again today or do you know what there was another accident in that same location it's those things that you talk about we want to be sure that we're solving for those everyday issues and we're also putting forward a common sense plan of investments of how we really begin to to meet that future um, that's also right there in front of us um, we are are working very carefully on all those listening sessions right now once all of that information comes in in the month of March 
We are going to be hosting an open house for our council members. It's open house the entire month. Um, they'll just let us know when they plan to uh, come by and uh, we'll be able to let them see all of the information that has come in and every council member will get a summary of the um, input that was received by their district, by the metro level, um, and in that voting exercise that we do with the, with the $20. So there'll be a lot of information that'll be provided to every council member in a, in a more open house kind of format. Meanwhile, so we've had council member listening sessions, community listening sessions, and we've got a council member open house also all during this period of time and it'll conclude toward the end of March we've been doing stakeholder listening sessions so we've met with a broad range of different groups with different perspectives different concerns um, and so forth and we will be continuing those um, all the way through um, through the end of March again all of that data will be collected up and will be um, used when we start to look at them what should the plan look like so I mentioned earlier, we have a lot of good projects. What I call, we've got a full cupboard. Um, Nashville has been very active over the past few years in developing pro projects and programs. Um, and, and they're sitting on the shelf. They're figuring out, you know, what are the right, what's the right combination of those things? What will meet those everyday issue needs as well as set us up for the future? Um, and that will be our challenge is to put all that together in a, in a good mix that, you know, is one that, that you all say, yes, that's it. I can support that. Um, we expect also during April and May um, to be doing the technical behind the scenes work. So all of that community listening sessions, policy listening sessions and so forth that I've described um, in April and May, we'll be doing cost estimate and scope validation. So the real hard technical work of making sure that we've really got the projects um, um, you know, in the, in the best shape possible and best understanding of possible of how they um, can move forward, what they'll look like and so forth, how much they'll cost. Um, and then around June, we expect to be able to, um, sometime around June, be, expect to be able to bring forward a draft um, that can be considered um, um, for moving forward. So that's where we are on the um, transportation planning effort. In addition to that, we have some other companion efforts that I would um, mention and then I'm glad to answer any questions that you might have. Um, we are working with Department of Public Works. Last week we kicked off a, an evaluation of our traffic management system. So we're doing a peer reviewed evaluation. How are we performing? How do we look? How are we staffed? How are we resourced against other similar peers across the country um, in traffic management? And what are some of the things that are opportunities for us um, to be able to improve? Um, Again, that's going to be, I think, a very key effort for us and a, and a high priority effort for us. So we started that last week. Um, and uh, I think that that's all of the things that we have actively going on right now. I work with, um, I know Mike Jameson is here, Mike. And now you, you guys all know Mike Jameson. I've been working with Mike on the policy level around uh, micro mobility um, uh, issues and so forth as well, which I'm sure you hear about also. So. Um, with that said, I'm glad to answer any questions. Okay, thank you very much. So, commissioners, questions? Well, I'll, I'll answer a question, um, although we, we talked about it a couple of months ago as well. But I was just kind of curious about the draft plan, if you could maybe give us a little bit more information about what that would be. Is that a list of specific intersection or projects? Is it a list of, you know, funding? Is it a list, is it fiscally constrained or is it more of like a general, um, direction like, sure. or as an action agenda, yeah. Sure. Um, right now, I think what we anticipate is that draft that comes out in June will have some specific projects in it. Some of, probably some of the more major projects will be specific projects. But for example, some of it may be, let's say sidewalks as an example. Sidewalks may be just like a level of funding you know, a funding category with some sort of, you know, or, or a place where there's a level of, of category that's preserved for funding. And when we get to June, we won't have funding as yet. Um, one of the things that the mayor thought was very important is for us to work about this plan a little differently rather than going forward and saying, um, you know, again, here's the plan and here's how we're going to do it. His, his um, uh, initiative was for us to bring forward a plan that really does solve for the problems that we are trying to solve for. Um, and then we'll figure out then what are all of the right strategies for how to actually resource and implement that. But I would, I would envision right now um, 
nor that the plan that comes out in June will have some specific projects in it and it will also have some categories of projects in it um, that would be you know filled out in detail um, at a later time we have processes right now for example public works already has a process by which they prioritize sidewalk investments it wouldn't be preempting that at all so it would just be sort of a, a level of resourcing that's necessary there um, in order to implement those kinds of projects so I think there will be some of both um, but without a specific um, funding strategy attached at this point it'll be let's decide what 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 we think is the right plan to move forward with and then we'll figure out and you know the truth is that whatever kinds of projects we include in there will in some measure suggest themselves what kind of what are the right sorts of funding strategies that go along with those and like, what time period is the plan hope to cover is it a like a plan for his uh, first term or is it a 25 year plan um, we're looking at something right now that probably would range anywhere from say seven to ten years seven to ten years somewhere along that time frame so you're going to have some things that are going to happen in a shorter term and then some things that would need to happen over a longer term um, again we're still in the let me be cautionary we're still in the draft stages right now we're still in development so what I just told you could change but I think just sort of directionally where we're headed right now we're probably talking about something in that kind of time frame okay. yes Thank councilman thanks for joining us this afternoon um, I guess you know I don't know how much you have incorporated some of what came up over the past year into the thinking about this but I know that uh, in a previous iteration of a transit plan there was sort of some nearby work done around parking modernization right and so I, I know you've mentioned some related things I know you're working on micro mobility policy etc does the transportation plan as a whole anticipate thinking through um, you know the work that this Commission has done and the parking modernization proposal even if not going forward obviously under a private model some of the ideas that could still be carried forward to to improve our sort of maintenance of our curbside and streets sure. street space so I think while this transportation plan proper is aimed at what those projects or project types are that we need to move forward to invest in in some fashion um, I think that one of the other things that the mayor has said um, and I think we can all appreciate um, deeply is that this needs to be a nested plan nested by the uh, from the perspective that we need to fit in with what is happening at the regional level and at the state level we need to make sure that crossing boundaries things are aligned but in addition to that we also need to be able to look at the other pieces and parts that are going on here in Metro everything from our land use and development plan um, to parking to micro mobility policy all those things are <coughs> going to need to be nested in this plan in a way that they all align so while that may not happen as a part of this plan proper it absolutely is something that we already contemplate alignment and consideration of other questions how many of you have been to one of our public meetings Oh, we got to get the rest oh. of you guys there. Okay. I was going to ask you. You said you have you've already had six. six We've already had six. We have five two. left. Okay. Um, I know the one this week is at Bellevue, but check our website. I wish I could remember the entire schedule for you. I'll, I'll, I'll send it out to you guys. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, but no, we would love to have you there. I think I think one of the things that you would really enjoy is the energy in the room when people come in and realize that they really are going to be listened to and then the the like I said the the exercise of figuring out prioritization with a finite amount of resources is just one that um, it's it's just been very valuable to watch people engage in that so and is it your goal to be finished before the March for the open house <coughs> the listening sessions all those listening sessions will be complete by the end of February the stakeholder listening sessions with different community groups and organizations will still be ongoing through March they will be incorporated into a summary at the end of March but they will still be ongoing during March what we will have completed up until that point will be made available to the council members as we're completing those all right, all right. thank you all. yes mr. Woods I um, I know our mayor is a very smart man and met with uh, governor, state legislators, state le leaders right after he was elected. Is there some form of public format that you, th that you envision seeing state buy-in, regional buy-in to 
what needs to go forward with Nashville? Sure. Um, I think that's happening now um, already in a variety of different forms. One of the things you talked about, you mentioned regionally, for example, GNRC, mm -hmm. there are a number of different um, stakeholder or groups that um, committees and so forth, whether it's the mayor's caucus or whether it's the MPO uh, committees, technical coordinating committees and so forth that all of Nashville Metro is active in. Um, and so in a very public way, you know, the, the work that we're doing is already being, um, you know, there's sort of a space being held for how that will fit in with everything. And we're coordinating at the project, project jurisdiction level and so forth. Um, so that's already ongoing. Um, at the state level, you mentioned that the mayor has met with the governor. Well, the mayor's staff is also meeting with the TDOT commissioner and TDOT staff and others that are actively engaged in development and delivery of transportation um, in and around Metro. For example, the um, interloop study and some of those kinds of things, that things that affect us, but the state also has a jurisdiction or investment in. Um, and so those things are happening um, in, you know, those kinds of meetings um, all along, which are all, all public meetings. And I suspect at the end of the plan that there will be, you know, some opportunity for us to demonstrate alignment, as I mentioned earlier, with that nested network um, that the mayor has absolutely told us is required. Thank you. Thank you. Right. I have some questions. You know, over the last several months, we've had uh, informational sessions about permit parking, valet stands, the parking meter. And, you know, one of the things that seems to have emerged, at least to me, is one, a real lack of any kind of information about where all these things are located, lack of mapping. Uh, the, the meter system is a coin system. It's very antiquated. And then, you know, what gets related to it is, well, people want to, you can't have any of these systems, permit parking, valet stands, a good uh, parking meter system, unless you have good enforcement and the inadequacy of, of enforcement. So could you address some of those issues as part of your plan, what y'all kind of looking for? Because to me, ultimately, as you and I have discussed previously, this is about trying to get some kind of valuation of the curbside in Davidson County and how to proceed, what's the best way to utilize it. So um, I think there's a, a couple of things that related to that that I would mention, um, one of which you and I talked a little bit about the other night. Um, no doubt about it that modern cities and cities that are really going to be in a position to thrive over the next 10 years are cities that are going to have defined curbside infrastructure management plans. Um, it's just curbside infrastructure is a piece of real estate that who could have contemplated. It's a little bit like our cell phones and what we, you know, how far we've, we've moved in 20 years. But just think in the last 10 years, I mean, you've got Uber and Lyft and scooters and, you know, e-bikes and you got all kinds of things happening on the curbside now. You've got sensors, you've got fiber, you've got, there's all sorts of things. It's not the curbside that you used to think of it with a sidewalk and parking meters, right? That's not really the end game anymore. So identifying what we want that future of curbside infrastructure management to be is something that we have top of mind. Um, it is a pair, it will be a parallel and perhaps a sequential effort to the transportation plan. But one of the things we're doing, for example, to sort of try to start to um, get an assessment in just a, a pilot, if you will, or study fashion. Um, and I know council member O'Connell is, is aware of this um, in his district. Um, we are, um, hopefully competing um, for a, an upcoming grant opportunity that would enable us to look at what does a digital curbside infrastructure program look like. Lots of cities across the country are looking at those kinds of, of opportunities and so forth, and we want to try to be able to see um, if we can look at something similar to that here. Again, it's a, it's a grant competition, so we'll see how we fare there. But we're thinking about it, I guess, is my, my point with that. In terms of all of those other things, everything that you mentioned is something that is now in that curbside infrastructure mm -hmm. that we've really got to sort of holistically rethink about. It's not just this or that or the other, right? right. It's how does it all fit together and how does it all work together or not, and how can we, how can we make it work together? So, again, that is a complementary but um, a little bit of a secondary effort right now to getting the transportation plan completed and underway. And then things like that, 
Um, plus, for example, I didn't mention it earlier, but the mayor a few weeks ago um, declared us a Vision Zero city. Um, that's actually a part of curbside as well. Um, but a, a Vision Zero city with an aim toward zero um, traffic fatalities. Um, we are um, should be initiating um, uh, an RFP toward a uh, the action plan that has to be developed around that sometime hopefully in the early late spring. Um, so again, moving those kinds of pieces forward that help us to better define those opportunities in our plan. And I think that's one of the reasons too why in our plan it'll be important. While it's always important to have very clearly defined projects so people can feel certainty and they can understand, we understand the accountability and so forth of what's in the plan being delivered. I think it's also going to be important to have some measure of flexibility in there so some of those kinds of opportunities that will be forthcoming as well as other things that we just can't possibly know about now but we may know about in three years or four years that we have a little bit of flexibility there to address those kinds of emerging issues, opportunities, whatever they might be. Any other questions? So thank you for coming. Thank what, you. what I hope that this we've gotten started here is a good relationship between our commission and the mayor's office so sure. that going forward, uh, you know, we can work together uh, to uh, help alleviate many of these uh, issues that citizens come to us monthly, you know, looking for help and assistance. So Absolutely. thank you. Partnerships are everything. So thank you all for having me today. I appreciate it. All right, the next item on the agenda is authorize a ballet zone for the Graduate Hotel on 20th Avenue North, requested by Premier Parking. I think there's someone here from Premier Parking. Yes, would you like to stand up front? Yes, please uh, and state your name for the record <coughs> so we know who you are. Uh, Logan Stanford with Premier Parking. So, would you mind stating that again, please? Yeah, Logan Stanford with Premier Parking. Okay. Um, so this ballet lane here, Miss Marshall has a little bit of uh, some of the backstory here with uh, some of the curb cutouts and um, areas here. So the current, so it's a little hard to see, the current um, hotel right now would be on this uh, 20th <coughs> and end side, so it's a little bit further. Um, Corby, can you pull that up a bit? Screen. Um, basically, if you can see the parking lot up there uh, where it says... Uh, 20th Avenue and Hay Street, the garage or the uh, hotel is going to be on that right hand side, just a little further up. So, is that a static shot is, or the internet stand? Is that just a steel shot? Uh, <coughs> Can you so, it's, it's, uh, it's up here in this further corner of the hotel. Um, if you were to assume this would be the, here and that would be West End, um, the curb cutout currently exists. Um, it was part of the building plan. I think they originally tried to present it off West End Avenue, and that wasn't viable with traffic. So it currently sits on 20th Avenue. Um, if you were to take, uh, it's a one-way street on 20th, so it would be on the left-hand side if you're coming off of West End, um, and just needing to be able to operate a valley operation from there for the hotel specifically. Is there any way to get, Corby, is there any way you can call up like a Google map so we have a clear... It's at West End. It's on 20th at West End. Okay. I have a plan here that was originally submitted for approval back in 2018. Are there any parking meters there? There are no parking meters there. Were there parking meters there prior to construction? There were not parking meters there. The original application was submitted for review in 2018 as part of the design review process through the department. The department approved the review plan. The applicant submitted a permit back in 2018, but they told us to hold because they were still under construction. Now that they are open, they're making a permanent application for this valet zone. Can, can you point out on... I I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time figuring out where your property is on this photo. Sure, it's, it's actually off the map it, here. Yeah, it's not on the photo, it's off okay. to the north. If you would go up 20,000 here, um, it's on the right hand side, basically just you're, off the map. You're directly across from the cathedral. Correct, yeah. And you're next to Amerigo's? Correct, yeah. If you're, if you're at Amerigo's off West End and you were facing, West End would be here, you were facing Amerigo's, it's just to your left. Um, I believe the old um, checkers, 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 yep. restaurant checkers in the Taco Bell. Yeah. Um, we're in that area. 
Okay. So there's still some other construction from another construction project still going on on the back side, um, but this would be the curb cut out directly on 20th Avenue, which is already um, in place. How many spot? How, how, what's the distance on the curb cutouts? How many cars can you fit in there? Um, I don't have exact uh, distance on there. You could probably fit between four and five vehicles, uh, roughly, in, in operation in there. That's um, outside of the drive lanes of traffic. And um, just to clarify, there was a curb cut cut out into the site when it was built. It's correct. Yes. Okay. And I I think that's what the plans here, which which were approved beforehand. Um, mm -hmm. It was under construction until that point where they, that was the last thing to get finished. But the curb cut is in place currently. Got it. Yeah. I guess the only thing is we had talked at the last meeting about whether or not we needed to wait on all valid permits until the study was done by the city, which um, was a request. I think you talked about that at last yeah. meeting. Right. What, what is the status of our study that we requested? What was it, November? We are in the process of updating all of our zones as far as where the valets are located. We're also in the process of doing a GIS map that will show <coughs> all the valet zones. And we're reviewing the current code as far as assessing what the fee should be for each valet space. So what is the fee for this one? Currently it's $50 for each valet zone. So this would also be $50. Well, per day? That's an <laughs> annual fee according to the code. That's why we're in the process of updating that code. When we get that updated information, we will present it to this commission and it will also be submitted to the council for final approval. I, I guess I'm, I'm just, I'm trying, I know we've done this for years, but so it's a $50 one time fee for. Ballet anywhere that is according that, to the code. Anywhere here. That is correct. And to get that code changed, or to if we if we needed to change that down the road, is that something we recommend to council? We are in the process of revising that code, and then we will bring it to this commission for approval. Yeah. I've been working with Jeff Hammond on this, and then whatever we recommend will be taken to Metro Council. Are they operating with the temporary permit for this right now? The contractor installed the signs at this location. Okay. Did they install that with the permit? Did they have a permit to install that? I guess that's the question being asked. I, could, I couldn't answer it. We on have our not side. issued a permit for that valet zone. Okay. And this is a paid, uh, there is revenue generated. Per the hotel here, this is not a complimentary uh, valet location. So, will you point out on that particular yeah. map yep. where is the curb cut, uh, about where it begins? The current hotel is sitting right here. The curb cut would be roughly around this area right here. Um, you do turn the corner, it starts basically adjacent from this this uh, lot. So, it's right in this area. And does and so, to make sure I understand, that means. The valet is occurring in the curb cut, not not taking a, a travel lane out of service. Cor correct. Yep. So this uh, it's kind of hard to see, but the actual hotel sits back a little bit. Um, this is the cut lane, yep. and the entire lane is where the curb or where the sidewalk is currently. Um, the sidewalk wraps around the bench front of the hotel, so um, it's a full full lane outside of the driving yeah. lanes you see here. Yeah. Is there is there a valet operating right now? There currently is. Okay. So without a permit, just to be clear? Trying to sort things out with, with uh, Ms. Marshall, it's, it's currently there. And um, trying to figure out the approvals with what signage was there versus the last uh, submission for valet permits. So about a year ago, maybe even longer now, somebody came in for the graduate hotel and wanted a valet on West End. Y'all might have went over this far. Um, and we had some pushback from the church, and so we we indefinitely deferred that item. When the plans came in, 
they showed the, the curb cut and the valet on 20th, and they went through the plans or approval process. Did not come before us necessarily. That's kind of why we're here now. So at some point, the plans showing the valet was approved, but not by you, not by okay. us. By the Planning Commission, perhaps? And, and even Public Works. I'm not going to say we weren't sure. involved. It, I would think that in order to be consistent with what we voted on at the previous, at last month's meeting, uh, and wanting to get this information, that we would defer this at this time. That I, I make a motion that we defer the okay. approval of this we until have, we get this report. Okay. So we have a motion to defer this item. Is there a second? Second. Second. We have a first and a second. So we can have some discussion. So I guess my discussion would be, I think at a minimum we need to get a temporary permit in place or otherwise resolve this circumstance, right? I mean, I think at a minimum we should not be saying you all can be doing something that is not actually allowed. Uh, the Department of Public Works has the authority to issue temporary valet permits if we need to. Okay. Well, well, I'm I mean, just, I guess what I'm saying is it sounds like we need to here. Yeah, because I'm just, what's disturbing based on the last several months of meetings that this commission has had is that we have a valet stand that is operating without a permit. No, How, we've got a permit. No, they do not have a, they do not have they a permit. They do not have a permit. There is, Contractor installed the sign in this location. Okay. Are they you are operating a valet stand? Yes, there, sir. Okay. Do you have a permit? No. No. Okay. So we have a valet stand that is operating without a permit. This has been an issue that's come up before. And I think, I don't want to speak for my fellow commissioners, but I think some of the commissioners' votes have been quite clear that we do not want to have a valet stand operating without a permit. So now, let me clarify for, for the terminology if there are permits that are issued on a temporary basis. What you what this body does is you authorize permanent permanent status for a valet. If, so we don't issue permits, we the commission. Um, we public works issue temporary permits. But, but, but their goal is case. to come here. And right, here. but in this case, there's not even a temporary permit. Is that correct? correct? That is correct. Okay. One of the staff members brought it to my attention, and I went out and did the review and saw that there was a valet operating there, and I contacted the valet company for them to submit their application on this. Which is when I became aware of that right. confusion with the contractor putting valet signage there, not trying to operate outside of what was already in place with the new building and construction. Uh, Ms. Costones, is there anything under the ordinance that creates any kind of recourse or fines for people that operate these, that these things are operating? I, I'm not trying to pick anyone out, but it's come to our attention before that valet stands have operated without permits. There's 1241070. Violators shall be fined for failures to conduct valet service in the manner prescribed in this chapter. All fines shall be assessed by the issuance of parking citation. Violators shall be fined as follows, um, and the fine is $50, which is the maximum amount that you can impose. It's per that, day per is violation. A, is that a per violation or is that a? Yes. Okay. So is each day considered a yes. violation? Okay. It can be. Continuing to operate without the permit okay. violation. Right. I, I am a little unclear, though. Given the curb cut, is this being operated in the right of way, or is it on private property? It's still metro property, okay. even with the curb. All right. So there's a motion. We have a first and a second. <clears throat> we have enough discussion. Is there a vote? Mm -hmm. All in. All in favor of the motion. Say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. The valet stand is on referral. Thank you, sir, for your time. Okay. Are there any other items? I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, last month you mentioned, I need one more minute of your time. Yes. Last month you mentioned 
you wanted an explanation of how the parking meter revenue fit in with the metro budget. Yes. And Mr. Wall, Mr. Wallstrom's here. I'm sorry. To, okay. Well, you're, you were about to get away without doing it, but you might as well not waste your time. Anyway. Yes, that she's would gonna, be. She's going to summarize it in a couple minutes or less. That would be helpful. Please step forward. Come to the podium. Hi, I'm Sharon Wallstrom with Metro Public Works. Um, whenever we collect the fines out of the meters or fees or whatever it is that we do, like the valet permits and things like that, the money goes into the Metro bank account. But when it does, we put in a, a code that lets them know where that money needs to be placed. And so that money is placed in public works revenue stream in our budget. So we, we get all the, the money into our public works units for expenditure against the, the amount of items that we have that we're doing. So it helps pay part of the parking patrol. It helps pay, you know, Diane and, and Chip and everybody else. So we never make enough money off of fines and fees. Our revenue never exceeds what our expenditures are. So we always have to be uh, appropriated additional money every year in order to make up the difference between what we collect and what our total budget number is. Any other any, questions? Any questions about um, Is Public Works responsible for collecting fines, or how, who does that? <laughs> Um, traffic violations. Yeah, traffic, traffic violations, violations does whenever it's the parking Sport. tickets okay. and things like that. But if it's if it's other items, there are some fines that we do collect, and there are some bills that we do we do send out. So the the whenever we bag the parking meters, we send the bills out for that, and we do collect that money internally. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you for coming okay. and provide that explanation. <laughs>